Hey folks, Wayne over here at the Ram Man Inc. Don't forget the ink. Let me take you on over here and show you the board briefly. You may find some interesting information there on that board. Maybe, maybe not. But I've never really made a video of us putting master cylinders together or some of the kind of work that we do on this level. Uh, we kind of consider trade secrets, family secrets. We've been doing this a long time. But today I'm going to show you about putting this. This is one of mine collection. It's going to a customer. It's one of the super rare, one of the most valuable Mopar master cylinders that there is. One year, went on those uh, 70 bodies. 222-9171, made by Bendix. Now, you can look at this casting, and you can deduce that this has probably never ever been bolted to a vehicle. That's true. It's an NOS unit that we got in a lot a long time ago. So, this right here is master cylinder Hemi style 5621. This is the way master cylinders often look when we get them. And this right here is what Uncle Joe and us, we turn out. This is a 6821. It used to look like this, and now it looks like this. You see that beautiful sleeve? Now, if you look on the flames, you can see the pitting, and you can tell that this has been bolted up to something. You can tell. Here's the piston set out of it. Of course, when we do these, when we sleeve them and all that, put all new seals and everything in there, and if the piston's bad, we replace them because sometimes they're really corroded. So anyway, you can see that this is, well, you can be a baker baking cookies and tell that this looks like some really fine work. Here we move on to a super rare Ford master cylinder. We do the Fords. Has the button. 222-7161. You saw this one inch bore. It's been sleeved also. You saw this on the high end Mustangs, Shelbys, 428s and shit. So this master cylinder used to look like that. So, yeah. We got in shot plastic. Uncle Joe would do some sonic cleaning for the pores, but as you can see, we have some beautiful examples. I'll stop wearing you out. So here we go. So now, now specifically on this 9171. Really, there wasn't any really kit offered for these. Way back in the early 70s, there was a few, but after that, uh, some of the catalogs and vendors got the numbers wrong and for several decades they were shipping kits that didn't fit a 9171. The uh, rear set piston was the wrong length. Now, so this is a beautiful example like I told you. It's never been bolted on a vehicle. It's pretty obvious. You can see the pitting and stuff. So, anyway. So, yes. We have to make our own pistons sometimes. These are made by us. Just like everything else we do. Just about Everything that we have comes off our property. One of the three. Either here, over at Hanley, or downtown. So, 
pretty nice colors. I get to choose the anodizing. Now, I want to explain something to you too that you maybe not know. Originally, these pistons, they were anodized. The reason that the aluminum was anodized to prevent it from corroding and degrading and the anodizing gives a hard, semi-hard coat to the outside. That's why you get the colors. We ain't doing it for fun. We ain't doing it for kicks. It costs money, but people that are spending a thousand or twelve hundred dollars it ought to be basically the finest shit that you can turn out. That's what I would expect. So, we're not going to go through all this work. Go ahead and sleeve one from the beginning so that it never wears out and doesn't pit. That's why we go ahead and sleeve brand new cylinders. Because, you know, these cars are not driven. They sit a long time. You're supposed to be using dot three, maybe dot four, but dot three. And, you know, it is hydroscopic. It collects water, and that's why the old manuals used to tell you to bleed your shit and blow it all out once a year and, and uh, refill it. So, flush it out, just like your cooling system. But, of course, nobody's ever done that. I don't know, since the beginning of time. There might have been a few a long time ago. So anyway, what are we getting ready to do here? Well, we're going to install these pistons, and I'll show you how I do it. So, we're going to lube up this bore a little bit with some brake fluid. We're going to put some lube in our hole. We're going to take a little bit more brake fluid, and I'm going to put some lube on these seals. This is the front piston. This operates your drum brakes. If you notice that the fluid capacity in the drum brakes, the front of this, remember, they're opposite. Front port, rear brakes, back port, front brakes. This is a lot bigger, holds a lot more fluid, so you wouldn't have to constantly be filling this up. You think about it. The wheel cylinders have very little volume. The wheel cylinders have very little volume. Behind them big old caliper pistons, you need to fill that space. As the pads wear, those pistons come out farther and they eat up some of this fluid and you don't want to go dry. So, so here we go. It's kind of a delicate procedure. Super fine point. Work this cup in with some slight pressure. I'm going to make it look easy. It's typically not this easy for most people. There's one. There we go. So, front piston down. Push him on down. Now we have our big piston. Our disc brake piston. And it pushes considerably more volume, but this master cylinder was only one year because they immediately decided that they needed to increase the bore because there were some reports of some of these 70 cars on the braking system running out of gas. That's a slang street term for so you're trying to do, let's say, a semi-panic stop from 80 miles an hour just going down the highway. So, you begin to press on the pedal rapidly, and you're pushing this fluid out, and the car is decreasing speed rapidly because you're doing almost an emergency stop. It's a controlled pedal to the floor stop. Well, once you got down to say 30 or 20 miles an hour, it seemed like you didn't have any more brakes left. And you didn't, because the pistons bottomed out. 
the piston's bottomed out and it's pushed all this volume out and there's no more to go behind the piston. So they don't go anymore. They go so far because of the volume and then they stop. So that's why 71, they came out with the snout master cylinder, which we call the snout master cylinder, which has that front snout on the front. And they increased the bore from one inch to inch and a thirty second by one thirty second, and they increased the stroke to push more fluid. So, and that snout style master cylinder, that casting in general was used across the board through about 1979. That original casting number on those E bodies and B bodies and stuff was, uh, what did they call? 1187. 346, 1187. It is a very fine master cylinder and they're very smooth and they work very well. Them 71 to 74s work very well. Anyway. Enough of all the secrets. Let's get this other piston in here. We get us a little dab on brake fluid. Coat these seals. All these seals in a master cylinder are different. That big old wide one right there, that's called the wiping seal. That's what keeps it leaking from out of the back. And this front seal right here, you notice it's a little bit different. It has these little divots right here. And these are called pumping cups. Wiping cups and pumping cups. And of course uh, we have a supply but ain't nobody making any of this shit anymore I'm gonna tell you. Been all long gone for about 20 years. So let's get him dropped in here. There we go. There we go. Pistons in. Clean it up. Get him his new lid and everything. Test him over there on the bench for flow and we're moving on. Thought y'all might enjoy that. Well, hey, let me go ahead and do this one too while I'm at it. We'll go ahead and put this Hemi Master Cylinder together. Ah, we'll wait on that. I've taken enough of your time. God bless you. God bless America. And happy Mopar. Bye.